St. Paul is like a teacher talking to his student, Timothy, in our first reading today. But he boasts to Timothy about the real teacher who taught him and patiently guided him to the way, the truth, and the life. What follows? After opening his letter with a usual greeting, almost sounds to me like a public confession. It reminds me, you know, of the old Christian hymn that is well loved by both Protestant and Catholic Christians. You know the song, Amazing Grace. And remember that part in that song that says, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Well, Paul, as it were, is telling Timothy, Jesus is our only teacher. We remain lost unless we are found by him. We remain blind unless we get to see him. And then he proceeds to tell Timothy what it was that his encounter with Jesus made him see. Dalawang bagay. Two things. They come in the form of confessions. And so I call them two confessions. The first is a confession of faults ang pag-amin ng kasalanan niya. And the second, a confession of faith ang pag-amin ng pananampalataya. They're like two spiritual eyes that had been opened inside him by Jesus. First, the confession of fault. Sabi ni St. Paul, I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and an arrogant man. Wow, what a public confession. It was his conversion experience that gave him an insight into his own wretchedness. I imagine the blinding light that Paul must have seen on his way to Damascus as a huge heavenly mirror that flashed before him all the darkness that was in his soul that was turning him into an intolerant, cruel, and murderous person. Come to think of it, Kayo ho ba nakita na ninyong mukha ninyo? Have you ever seen your face? I mean, not through a mirror, but with your own eyes. Impossible, di ba? Minsan, I ask myself, bakit kaya hindi na lang nilagay ni God yung mata natin sa kamay natin, no? So that you can just point outside to see the world. Tapos, balik tarin mo na lang, invert them, so that we can actually see our face, ourselves. Pero, with our eyes positioned where they are now, they are unable to see our own face directly. Siguro, if mirrors had not been invented, we would have no way of knowing what our faces really look like. Then, we would really need others to look at us and to tell us what they see. Like, Uy, may muta ka sa mata. Uy, may lumalawit sa ilong mo. Uy, may dumi ang mukha mo. You don't see that, do you? Others see it for you. Unless you look at a mirror. Well, this is what Jesus is speaking about in today's gospel. And I think 
He is exaggerating it deliberately. Nagpapatawa. You know, jokers kasi si Jesus. He's joking in this gospel. He speaks about the irony of seeing a tiny splinter in another person's eye when the dirt that is in your own eye is as big as a log. Nakala mo yung troso can fit in the eye. Well, exag. He is deliber deliberately making his audience laugh at the ridiculousness of it all. This is what me, This is what the first confession of Paul is about. A confession of fault. But what motivates it is a second kind of confession. The confession of faith in the God who has treated him mercifully, in the abundant grace that the Lord had given him, and in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus, if I may quote him directly. The Lord had to strike him down, had to make him blind first, so that he could make him see his arrogance, which was caused by his own ignorance in his unbelief, to borrow Paul's own words. By seeing God's graciousness, Paul gets to see his own wretchedness. You know, Paul's conversion experience also makes me think of faith as a kind of a two-way mirror. Alam nyo ba yung glass windows that are overlaid with a thin layer of silver tint that makes the window function like mirrors from the outside at daytime, but which you can see through, you can see through at night. On the one hand, the light outside and darkness inside makes you see your face as in a mirror. On the other hand, the darkness outside and the light inside makes you see what is within, what is inside, as in a regular transparent glass window. The Saint John of the Cross said something to this effect. Sabi niya, the closer I get to the light, the darker my own darkness seems. And Saint Augustine, of course, on the other hand, speaks of the God within us as one who is more intimate to me than I am to myself. This is a beautiful insight, you know. It means I cannot say I have faith until I have learned to see both my own wretchedness and the graciousness of God at the same time. The opposite of that is what we might call spiritual blindness. And that is about being quick at seeing the wretchedness of others while boasting about our own righteousness. These are the type who can become very dangerous teachers because they are all too sure of themselves. And in all honesty and humility, that can happen to church leaders too. Very quick at seeing wretchedness outside while boasting about our own righteousness. Unable to see grace. People are unable to see grace when they are blinded by arrogance. You know, sa Pilipino, sinasabi ng mga nakatatanda, huwag kang tumanggi sa grasya at baka lumabo ang iyong mga mata. I don't know what they mean when they say that. Inglisin natin. 
Do not reject grace because your eyes will grow dim. I used to wonder about that saying. But I think our readings confirm that. Grace opens our eyes to God's goodness and mercy. And grace also enables us to see our own inadequacy and wretchedness. It is this kind of disposition that allows God to do His work in us, to make sure that the work of transformation that He has begun in us is going to be brought to completion.